Let's go there. Second Kings chapter 6. Let's read verse 11. Because of time, let's get to verse 17. And Elisha prayed, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. Lord, open his eyes. Watch that. And the Lord opened the young man's eyes so he could see horses of fire, chariots of fire. Watch this now. Everywhere upon the mountain, round about Elisha. Now, get this. This is a tricky part. This is a tricky part. Now, the Bible said, And God opened his eyes, and he saw chariots of fire round about Elisha. Why didn't he see chariots of fire round about him? Why didn't the Bible say that Gehazi saw chariots of fire round about Elisha and round about him? Why? Because when God sends a prophet to your life, the anointing upon that prophet becomes your covering. I, can I speak to somebody? Am I, am, I, am I speaking to the right people right now? Listen to me. Ah, yeah, 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 chai, chai, chai. This, I feel, I feel fire in me. I feel fire in me. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. Listen to me. When God sent a prophet, when God sent an apostle saying, hey, yeah, 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 I meant to say something. When God sent this prophet, hey, Sakrita Paliga, when God sent a prophet into your life, the anointing of that prophet becomes your covering. That is why the day you doubt that prophet, the day you begin to think, is, is this prophet, is the prayer going to work for me? The day you begin to, you begin to have doubt concerning the prophet, the day you begin to say things against the prophet, the day you begin to utter words against that man of God, the day you begin to think in your heart, conceive things about the man of God that are not right, that is the day you lose your covering. That is why many people lose their anointing. Why? Because in the mind of God, why did God not place the chariot of fire around about Gehazi? Why? Because in the mind of God, I have equipped my prophet and his grace is enough to cover you over your life. Don't get me wrong. Every Christian in God has covering over his or her life. The blood of Jesus covers you. The grace of God covers you. The power of the finished work of Jesus on the cross of, Je of, of on the cross of Calvary covers you. But listen to me. There are some dimension of temptations. There are some dimensions of spiritual conflicts. There are some dimensions of tribulations. There are some dimensions of things that the grace upon your life cannot handle. You need a man of higher authority. You need a man of higher that is operating in higher dimension. Though everyone has authority, but not everyone is operating in the same dimension of that authority. Not everyone is operating in the same realm and levels in that authority. Authority has levels. Though everybody is a citizen of Nigeria, though everybody is a citizen of United States, but it is not all privilege that every citizen enjoys. There are some privilege that the president enjoy that the citizen don't enjoy. There is a privilege that the governor enjoy that the common man does not enjoy. There is a privilege that a chairman, that a that uh, uh, that a senator enjoy that the citizen don't enjoy. Why? Because there is level. There are levels of authority, and that is why your spiritual father carries an unusual dimension of the spirit. Why? Because there is a grace to father and that grace to father is a grace of covering. When God makes a man a spiritual father, he places upon him the grace to cover. The grace to cover. It's like a hen. Every, every chick is protected. Every chick can defend themselves. But there is a grace that the hen carries. Why? Because the hen can spot a 
walk from afar. The chick might not be equipped at that level of, of, of intimacy with the Father, with the Holy Ghost. The chick might not be trained to the level of spotting a hawk from afar. The chick has at that point in time in, in his or her level of maturity with God, in his or her level of work with God, might not at that point in time be trained to spot a hawk from afar. But there is something about the spiritual father. There is something about the hand. There is something about the prophet apostle saying, hey, can I, can I, did I just say something? There is something about hey, this man, this prophet. Hey, God, am I saying something? There is something about our spiritual father. There is something about the hand that can the hand can spot a hawk from afar. And the hand have been equipped over time to experience an intimate detailed and intense work with God. The hand have understood what to do at every junction in time. That is why the hand can spot at that time that hey, there is a hawk coming from afar. Why? Because the hand can sense, can sense the sound of the hawk, can perceive the change in the wind, in the wind pattern, can perceive, can see that when the wind starts to blow like this, it means there is something flying over the air. And at that point in time, danger is, at, is around. I need to protect my cheek. And that is why those cheeks that run far away from the hand, that begin to say, oh, I don't need the spiritual covering. This pastor, who does he think he is? I am more anointed than this man. I carry the same grace that he carries. But what that person don't understand is that there are levels in the spirit. I we might be in the same height physically, but we are not on the same level. Don't get it. Don't get me wrong. Don't get this prophet. Don't get Apostle sign it wrong. Don't act it. I'm not saying so. No wonder. No wonder Paul says something. He said, though we are we are we are disciples of Christ, though we are apostles in the faith, but but hey, I'm not in your level. He said, I speak in tongues more than you all. What was Paul actually saying? He's saying that, hey, even in this dimension of spiritual gifting, we are not the same. We are not mates. I carry something you don't know. I carry something you are not carrying. I'm operating in a dimension that it, it, to, for you to operate, it's still going to take you years. It's still going to take you the next five years. It's still going to take you the next ten years. So hold on this grace that I'm already operating in. Hmm. My God, am I talking today? But though all of them we are imparted by the same Holy Spirit, though though the tongues of fire came upon all of them, but not all of them operated at the same level. Paul said, he said, my tongue of fire, the tongue of fire from the Holy Ghost that rested upon my head is more than ye all. I speak in tongues. The evidence is I speak in tongues more than all of you. That is why you can be in the house and beds are crying in your house and I can walk into the same house and say all the beds shut up and for the next 24 hours you won't hear the sound of a bed. Why? Because though we are, we are, we are the same height, though you are fat like me, though you are slim like me, though you are tall like me, though you are short like me, though you have you, your eyes blinks like me, but we are not on the same level. I carry something that can settle your destiny. I carry something that can settle your life. That is why a prophet is a Covering over your life and destiny. And that is why people that want to go far and people that want to achieve far and people that want to be great, they always learn to stay under the covering. They always learn to submit to the covering. They always learn to obey the covering. I heard years ago, I was reading in the books about a man called Dangote, how he offered his Seat in the flight on the on, at one of the flight that he was that he was boarding to a certain state and a, a, a bishop Benzina also needed 
her at one of his invitees, one of his guests, to board that flight urgently. And Dangote offered his seat. He submitted under his grace. Dangote was not a Christian. Dangote was not born again. But he understood that hey, there are spiritual authorities. There are spiritual rankings. This man can change my destiny. This man can change my life. If this man say a word, he can alter my destiny forever. Though I am meant not to be the richest man in Africa, but this man can speak my destiny to become the richest man in Africa. Though I am destined to be the richest man in Africa, but I need a man in higher authority to unlock me into that dimension, to unlock me into that office. Can I, am I speaking to somebody today? To unlock me into becoming the richest man in Africa. And what did he do? He sacrificed his seat. Many of you don't want to sacrifice. Many of you don't want to, don't want to obey. Many of you don't want to humble yourself under the prophet. Many of you don't want to humble yourself under your spiritual father. Your spiritual father, before your spiritual father says one, you have said many. Before your spiritual father says one, you have said one million. Before your spiritual father says, hey, send this to my account. You, 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 you begin to question, why, why, why should he ask me to send this to his account? Why should he? Why should he? Why should he? Is he not walking like I'm walking? Is he not quite and quite and quite and quite? And at the end of the day, you miss your position. And another chick gets into, gets into that grace, gets into that anointing and you are there for years, nothing is working. You say, ah, but we have the same spiritual father. You have the same spiritual father, but you don't enjoy the same grace. I've had a testimony before, and one of my spiritual sons shared this testimony years ago. But uh, let me just share this testimony for the sake of this message. Listen to me. He said something. He, call, he called me on the phone and shared this testimony. He said, man of God, he said, he said, I was, I was about to cross the road and a heavy, a, a, a huge car, a, I think it was a truck was coming almost to hit me. And I saw you, you came, you came from behind me, took my hands and ran in the kind of speed that I've never seen before, ran across the road. Listen to me. I was not there. I was not the one. I was, I did not even at that point in time, the spirit of the Lord God did not even quicken me or uh, signal me to even pray for that spiritual uh, child at that point in time. But because that child was in my mind, because that child, the affair of that spiritual child was always on my mind, because that child was always taking good care of me, was always making sure that I'm okay. When I'm going to ministration, the child will pay will pay my, my, my effort. The child will, 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 will make sure I, I have sons and daughters that make sure that, yes, things are put in place when I'm going for programs. When I'm going to minister, even there are sons and daughters that ensure that there is food available in the house for me to break my fasting with. They ensure that I'm well taken care of. They ensure that they buy shoes for me every month. Those sons and daughters are always in on my mind. There are sons and daughters now whose time and offering comes regularly. Those sons and daughters are on my mind. Even if I don't pray for you, you being on my mind, my angels work for you. The angel of this ministry works for you. Why? Because we, we say, he said, the thing you do to the least of my brethren, the thing you do to the least of this one, you have done to me because everything you do to your spiritual father, everything you do to the prophet, you are doing it to God. And God keeps account of everything. And that is why God can never allow you to face shame or rejection. God can never allow you to face pain. Why? Because God knows your usefulness to achieving his plan through, his, through the life of his prophet. Some sons and daughters don't have use. They are nowhere. They are nowhere. They, they don't even pray for their spiritual father. They don't even give. They don't even call to say, Papa, how are you doing? How are you doing? Is there, is there, is there, is there, how are you doing? How is your car? How is the administration you are going to? Have you paid the flight fare? How are you doing? Hope you are okay. They don't even care. 
those people are not, they are not in God's agenda. Why? Because God has an agenda. Something he wants to carry out through his prophet, through his, his, his vessels. And the people that key into it, the people that key into the move of God, the people that assist the dimensions of the Spirit of God to be made manifest on the earth, God records their name. That's why in the book of Matthew chapter 26, reading from verse 6, we see the life of a lady, a woman with the alabaster boss. Listen to me. There were so many women that the anointing of Jesus was impacting every day. There were so many women that Jesus was healing every day. There were so many women that the grace of Jesus was touching every day. But none of them had their name entered into the Bible. Only this woman with the alabaster boss, did Jesus comment upon her life and prophesied upon her destiny that because of what this woman has done, that this her deed will be remembered as a memorial for her. Immediately her name entered the Bible. Why? Because of her relevance to the anointing. A prophet you don't take care of. The anointing can never speak over your life. That was why grace located Dorcas. Dorcas was not qualified to receive resurrection. Dorcas was not qualified to receive the anointing. Dorcas was not qualified to receive a touch from the Lord. Dorcas was not qualified to be visited by Jehovah and have a life, have a life restored. But Dorcas came under grace. Why? Because of her relevance to the anointing. And it was written concerning Dorcas that this was a woman that took care of the poor. Not only did she take care of the poor, she took care of the men of God, the prophets that were around the city, that were in the city and around the city. And because of that, she gained heaven's favor. Listen to me. No matter what is written concerning your destiny, God can change it. It now depends on your relevance to the anointing. Sons and daughters don't struggle. All they do is they take care of the prophet and God takes care of them. Why? Because when you are relevant to the anointing, when you are relevant to proper to the propagation of the gospel, God takes care of you. Because when God sees that, hey, this son, this daughter is helping this vessel that I sent to the earth to carry out an end time assignment. And this son and this daughter is helping, putting finance, making sure that things are working well, to ensuring that this gospel is spread abroad. And my end time agenda through the life of this prophet is actualized. What happens is this. God God writes your name in his book of remembrance. Listen to me, that is why so many people are not remembered. Why? Because they don't remember the anointing.